When you really look at how much Warhammer Fantasy has changed over the years, it should become readily apparent that the game most of us are familiar with is quite distinct to what the game started off as. But every so often, if you look, you'll see something that has been in the game's DNA for a very long time. Today, we are going to be looking at one such thing, the Orc Boar Boy. I actually do have some experience fighting against war boys in 7th and 8th edition. At my high school club, there was a guy who was really into orcs, so much so that he had both the 40k and fantasy orc armies. Being an empire player myself, I was a natural enemy for his orcs, although I think that could be basically said of any faction in Warhammer Fantasy. While his army was primarily orc infantry, and the occasional proxy giant, he did have some boar boys, and in particular he liked to put his war boss in a unit of them. Despite the fact that, at least on paper, the boar boys were a fearsome unit, I remember them a lot more fondly for having a tendency to fail animosity checks at the worst possible moment. So I was quite surprised to see that boar boys have been a part of the Orcs and Goblin army since the very beginning. Our history today starts in 2nd edition. What's curious about the Boar Riders unit is that by default, they're actually Goblin Riders. It costs 3 and a quarter points to upgrade each Goblin to an Orc. It seems wacky to us nowadays, but Games Workshop's point systems have always been a little bit peculiar. Imagine the difficulty of list building when you have half and quarter points to work with. Anyway, presuming you spent the points to get the orc, the other two interesting parts of the profile is that you can give them a spear and chainmail armor. I'll save the intricacies of list building in 2nd edition for another day, but suffice to say, the basic conception of the boar rider in the orcs and goblins army is laid out here, and it won't ever really change. What's really clear, and what will remain consistent for the unit's history, is that boars are foul-tempered and violent, and they and orcs naturally get along like peanut butter and jelly. Wherever orcs are, there will invariably be a herd of boars with them. It's been a consistent theme in the Orcs and Goblin army. By 3rd edition, things have progressed a little. Now there are two types of boar riders, Snordas, which are seen as the more elite boar riders, and Gruntas, which is seen as the less powerful version. In terms of their profiles, this is the standard profile we will see for basically the rest of the game's history. With the noted exception that Snordas have weapon skill 4 and Gruntas have weapon skill 3. They both, funnily enough, have initiative 2. One fewer than the boars they're riding on. You should think of the Gruntas as a general purpose boar cavalry. You can give them armor, shields, and spears to turn them into shock cavalry, but uh, equally they would also be a kind of medium cavalry, with bows to harass the enemy from afar. The Snorters, on the other hand, are your premier attack cavalry, whose only option is for a spear, although they can take a magical standard. A good idea would be to mix your composition so that the better Snorters are the ones to actually deliver home the charge, while your Grunters are there to soak up damage from the enemy, and support them. This is the most divergent the Boar Boy unit will ever get, and future editions will go back to a much simpler arrangement. From 6th edition to 8th edition, the profile of the Boar Boy is essentially the same. Their two standout features are Toughness 4 and Initiative 2. In 6th edition, they have the Ignore Goblin Panic rule, which is eventually folded into the Size Matters rule for 7th and 8th edition. Their basic equipment is a hand weapon, light armor, with the option for a spear and a shield. In 7th and 8th edition, they also gain the Choppers rule, which gives them plus one strength on the first round of combat. Otherwise, their rules are unchanged. Thick Skinned gives them a 2 plus to their armor save for being mounted on boars, and Tusker Charge grants their war boars plus 2 strength on the charge. This makes the boar strength 5 on the turn it charges, and that's an insane level of strength for a mount. To be honest, I'm really intrigued by the idea of an orc cavalry army. The orcs and goblins army in Warhammer Fantasy has always been one with loads of different styles of play available to you. While not necessarily optimal, an orc player can build an army that suits one of many of their various different playstyles. I haven't really seen the idea of Orc Cavalry armies represented too often though. While they're very iconic units, I don't think the Warboy unit is all that great, not unless fielded in particularly large numbers. 
Uh, one of the main issues is that cavalry, more so than infantry, are really dependent on being at the right place at the right time. Even relatively elite cavalry can still be killed if they do the wrong charge at the wrong unit. The low leadership of boar boys and their animosity rule means there's always the potential for them to blunder their movement and be out of position when you need them the most. That being said, I think there's something really fundamentally horrifying about a literally heavy cavalry unit. There's a reason why many famous orc warlords have ridden on the backs of boars. The combination of orc and boar is a brutal combination that evokes fear whenever you hear it, or perhaps smell it, coming over the horizon.